Hello, in today's video, I'm going to give you a second look at what the Eastern Woodland Native American warrior or man would have worn in the 1700s. Today's video is going to be a little bit shorter of a video because I already have another video that goes into great detail of what a woodland warrior or male would have worn in the 1700s. If you're looking for a more detailed video, maybe go check that one out. That would be part one. This is part two. Now we're going to start from the top of my dress and work our way down. You'll see I'm wearing two feathers in my hair. That was common in the eastern woodlands. They would often just wear one or two feathers and as opposed to wearing a war bonnet or something um, in their hair. Another thing you'll see I'm wearing is a red porky roach. These were off another really common thing being worn. Um, they would be most often red if not any other color because red was associated as a warrior's color in many cases and they would be made of deer hair or porky pine hair. Working down you'll see that I have a pair of glasses on. Now a lot of people often don't wouldn't think of natives wearing glasses and for the most part that is true but there are accounts of woodland natives wearing glasses in the 1700s. Um, now whether or not these were worn to actually help the wearer's vision or if they were just worn as a cool trinket um, that's up for debate really but they were worn. Another thing you'll see I'm wearing is I have copper armbands and a copper bracelet. Um, trade metal was a very common thing. Natives liked metal, wearing metal jewelry just as people like wearing jewelry today. Natives liked to wear bling back then. They would wear um, armbands like this or bracelets or something or piercings or earrings just to basically show status. To show well just as someone might wear a nice gold chain today um, and the most common trade metals at the time were brass copper and silver these were the common metals that you would see woodland natives wearing um, you also see that I have a womp womp bracelet I'm not going to go into real detail on womp womp today because I have another video already on womp 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 um, meaning and belts if you want more history behind Womp Womp, please check that video out, but Womp Womp was a very important trade item in the eastern woodlands, both prior to European contact and after European contact, so to see them wear that. Another thing you'll see I have is I have this bag. This is a woven bag. This bag is woven of many different strands, tightly woven together to create the pouch, and this was a common practice among woodland natives weaving. It wasn't just something that happened prior to European, con I mean, after European contact. Prior to European contact, a bag such as this one, it's would be woven with natural fibers or such as hemp or something like that. Um, but after European contact, you can see that threads became available, as you see in my sash I'm wearing here or in my leg ties. Um, and this bag also is decorated with many red scalp locks. It was often common to see bags, especially along the bottom of the bag, be decorated with multiple red scalp locks. Um, and they were often, if not always, red because it was, again, a very common color. you also see that I have a neck knife sheath. And neck knives were something that was very... Um, particular to the eastern woodland region it was very very common to see natives wearing a neck knife native men and these knives were often were more than just a sheath to hold your knife but they were a decorated piece and a very highly valued piece and these would be put a lot of time and effort into making these um, and they would often be decorated with quill work which is the process of taking porcupine quills and cutting them and dyeing them and then arranging them into a pattern. You can see on this one here it has some very nicely done quill work along the sides and also down the center some larger quill work. Um, this was these quill designs and quill patterns could become very distinct and unique to a tribe 
often a pattern could either tell a warrior status or a pattern could tell what tribe that warrior or man was from just by the pattern of his neck knife sheath. It was off, it was somewhat like a name tag. Um, this one here is just a little one for a patch knife, nothing too big, but very you can tell the detail and effort that was put into making it. And this one here is made of brain tanned deer hide. The leather is. It also has some red scalp locks on it. As for the knife itself, nothing too special there. Just a deer antler handled patch knife with the metal blade. Because by this time in the 1700s, flint napping had become an almost obsolete thing. You wouldn't see many people with a flint knife. They were almost all metal trade knives by this time. Um, not to say that maybe with a child or a camp to see it wasn't impossible, but very unlikely. This one here is also unique because it has glass trade beads, um, glass trade womp womp beads as the string holding it together. So this is a very beautiful piece. Another thing you'll see I'm wearing in addition to my cotton trade shirt is you'll see I'm wearing a waistcoat. And these waistcoats these vests were a very common thing worn by men of the 1700s, European men, and they were worn in a lot of uniforms among the French and the British. Now during the French and Indian War, it was a very common thing for natives, well not a very common thing, but it was a practice among natives to take trophy items or trophy coats and wear them to show off that they were involved in maybe the battle to show off that they, they have their enemy's coat to wear it as a uh, trophy or status. So it was, was, that's why you may see a woodland native man running around with a British officer's coat or in this case a uh, British officer's vest or British soldier's vest. Um, and that was, again, a pro practice that is now kind of more being disputed as to how common it actually was. Because if you go to modern reenactments today, you'll see a lot of people wearing, or at least a couple people wearing, you know, a British officer's coat or a British um, militia's man's part of their uniform in their native attire and outfit. And yes, it there's no doubt in my mind that the practice was done in taking trophy coats and taking um, things off of officers' uniforms um, to wear. As for the actual commonness of it, whether it was done a whole lot is debated, but there's no doubt in my mind that it was done. And there's d report uh, documents to say that natives had did it. Another thing I have is I have a very basic ball-headed war club here. War clubs were a very common thing war, um, used by woodland natives even after the invention of guns because a lot of the guns back then, such as like the flintlocks, they didn't have a high rate of fire by any means. They need to be reloaded after every shot, so hand-to-hand -hand combat definitely did come to play, come into play, and so a lot of war clubs were still being used well into the early, well well into the late 1700s, if not early 1800s, so it was still a common practice to see warriors be using clubs. Clubs did not become obsolete at all, and it was, this one here is just a very basic club. A lot of the clubs were basic, and it has, again, the ball-headed the ball at the head of the club, which was a unique design to the eastern region. Some clubs were very decorated, and um, some clubs were not. It just depended. That one there is just a pretty, pretty, pretty basic club. Nothing too special. But you'll see I'm wearing a breech cloth made of trade cloth because, again, Breech cloths were 
the common wear of almost all natives in the Americas, in opposed to such a something like pants. But this is trade cloth, which by the 1700s almost all tribes were wearing trade cloth. Very early on, most tribes, one of the very first things they did was with, with trade cloth was make breech cloth. So it was very rare, if not if not at all, that you see a. Tr uh, native wearing anything other than a trade cloth, breech cloth, leather trade cloths were quickly phased out after European contact and the main reason for that as far as my understanding is one leather is not as comfortable as cloth around your crotch but also in, a, also in addition to it being a comfort item it didn't require a lot of trade cloth to make a breech cloth so it was a something that even the poor you didn't have to be in high status to acquire it. Where leggings themselves, yes, in the 1700s it was becoming pretty common to see leggings be made out of um, trade cloth. Deerskin leggings were not, buckskin leggings were not completely phased out by any means due to the fact that leather did offer somewhat more protection but also it did require quite a bit of cloth to make a pair of leggings so leather leggings as these ones you see here were still common but again also so were cloth leggings so that was an either or thing but leggings were often worn and moccasins these moccasins were center seamed stitched up the center that was a traditional design of the eastern tribes and moccasins in most native culture especially in the eastern tribes did not phase out till very 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 late on moccasins leather moccasins were still the primary footwear of most natives um, well past um, European contact so that's just a quick video today I hope you enjoyed it I hope to make a lot more videos here coming up in the future so if you enjoyed it please hit that like and subscribe button it helps me out a lot and have a good day